Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics, back with Simply Sweet for December, my favorite month of the year. Christmas, of course, we could not resist. I couldn't make up my mind <laughs> on this one because there's so many iconic things about Christmas. The tree, wreath, candy canes, bells, music, so many things. So we have two motifs, Christmas trees and some darling candy canes with bows and some elegant hand embroidery to set it off. Speaking of, couldn't make up my mind because I love it all at Christmas time. For this time, we, I couldn't decide, do I want this black kind of ditzy print in the back? I loved this print as well that you're seeing, these beautiful poinsettias. And so, well, I did both, <laughs> okay? For the previous months, we've had the same fabric on the background as the backing. But how fun now that we could have two different fabrics. So let me just touch on that right now. Just like before, we're still gonna be preparing our background, but let me just call a special emphasis uh, for you that when you get your kit, we wanna make sure we're clearly identifying that the beautiful poinsettia is your backing, right? And that's the piece that you'll be ironing your fusible fleece to. So these two are together. Of course, you'll be ironing the fusible fleece to the back side of the poinsettia fabric. That's the back. The background will be our beautiful ditzy print and the coordinating, from the coordinating same collection there. And that's the one, when you get ready to snip and turn that through and you kind of pull it away. Again, if you're like, what are you talking about? Check out our early video. Can't even believe how many months ago. Look how many we've made so far. Back in February, when we kicked this off, we went and showed you how to prepare the background. In that video, we talk about once you have these two pieces together, you kind of pull one away and make a snip. That's this fabric here, your black ditzy print. You get the idea. You'll prepare your background and now we're ready to do our embroidery, ready to do our applique. So let's go ahead and jump right to that. As always, you know that when you get our kit, the beautiful scallop background, all the Christmas tree, the star, the trunk, the candy cane, all of this is pre-fused and laser cut. Just get the kit. We've also included a skein of green embroidery floss for your beautiful garland as well as both red and gold beads. This was a month I just apparently couldn't make up my mind, so I did everything. I really put our whole heart into this, and we hope you enjoy that. A lot of sparkle. The thread set also has some beautiful gold metallic thread in that. You can see our coordinating project on set for our other series, the foundation paper piecing. Again, we could not resist the temptation to just bring forth our most elegant projects and that is beautiful in our Singing Angel as well. Whole nother series to check out. For this month, uh, as we've been doing, we will get our scallop background along with our layout diagram. Just like you've been expecting every month, you get two sheets. We have uh, lineup targets, get everything lined up, cut out your scallop. We will bring our background onto our light box and turn that on. And we're going to use a micron pen. We want to use a permanent pen. We did want to trace all of our embroidery first and then do the stitching all the way through all layers. That's how we did prepared ours for this month. So just like you've seen us do, you would just kind of draw that on, draw your lines, and on, in fact, let me just draw a couple of those and get on there so you understand the process. And again, if you've just found, you're like, ah, this is the first time I ever heard about Shabby Fabrics. First off, welcome. We are thrilled you're here. Or if you are a veteran, you've been here all the time, thank you for coming back. You know we prepare these videos for you with, our whole team is really coming together every time we do this to bring you our best efforts and our best videography, which we have amazing teams to do that. Get everything traced out for embroidery, but we're not gonna embroider yet. We're gonna now take our shapes, our Christmas trees and our candy cane, and this is where our apple fuse mat will come into play. A couple people have been asking, what is this thing that you use to keep everything nicely organized? These are the slap and wrap peels by the Gypsy Quilter. I love doing these because 
using these because as you can see, this thing just wants to unroll. If you use stabilizer, maybe you do machine embroidery, same thing. You have to have a way to kind of keep things contained and organized. And this is a nice investment and they just, they're just almost bulletproof. So you're gonna find a lot of things, a lot of reasons to use those, love that. So let's bring out some of our shapes. And just like we've done before, we have our background, or actually our candy cane will come first. This is kind of that quilt by numbers, paint by numbers we all did as kids. We have our holly and our bow. And for that little tiny knot of our bow here, this is where I love to use it's hard to grab these little pieces with my fingers. Once you have that, off we go to with medium heat. Remember that? I always have to remember that. I definitely have done a fair amount of fusible applique on maximum heat. So try to, um, just every time you know you're getting ready to do the applique, remember to dial that heat back to a medium. Fuse everything together let that cool down and then of course that'll come off as one assembled unit. Here's just one of them. We'll of course complete that. When you get ready to do your Christmas tree, I've done one ahead of time, put your trunk down, you can put your Christmas tree down and then I would just wait to do the stars because you can see there's barely any contact there. Not enough contact that you could put all three pieces together. That's no problem though. As you get ready to lay everything out onto your background, let me just give you an example of what I'm talking about. We would just bring this down to the background. Right, we're gonna bring all of our pieces to our background with our star, another great one to use your tweezers for. And we put our candy canes down this is such a fun, enjoyable process to be able to pre-assemble these shapes. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Back in the day, <laughs> before this even existed, I was literally bringing shapes to the background kind of one by one, and I kept reheating everything. Um, first off, that fusible can only be heated so many times before it starts to fail. But aside from that, my site picture was just kind of in the ballpark. Now it's exactly where I want it to be. And so um, the projects came out looking so much better. And then of course, off we go to iron that down. And you can do exactly what I just did. You don't have to lay out everything all at once. Get a section you're comfortable with that fits underneath your iron and then move on to the next section. So I'd recommend doing that that way. Once you have all of the applique down, now it's time to remove the fusible paper or the fusible the paper off the back so you're exposing the fusible webbing and ironing that down to the background that we've prepared. I do want to call your attention to something extra we did. Again, it's Christmas. Let's zero in before we even touch on our embroidery and let's zero in on not just using this thread set, but how we did it a little bit differently this time. You do have your 50 weights, you also have a 12 weight, and you have a metallic. It's Christmas. We had to bring out the beauty of the metallic here that we've included as well as the beads, but also to add some beautiful detail to our Christmas tree. So let's look at our Christmas tree here. What we did, we didn't use anything fancy, and you can see this here on the diagram where we just drew some lines, and this is why I have the ruler out here. If you are comfortable with using your presser foot to establish lines, go for it. That's not me. I wanna have everything drawn out so that I can know exactly where I'm going to sew. So for example here, you can see that we started in the middle and then we came over a certain distance. What's the easiest way to do this? With a ruler easily. So you'll just find your center portion, and this is a great time to switch to a friction pen. Switch to a friction pen, which is a temporary mark. Draw the line on the Creative Grid tool. Notice how we have this line right here, this dash line. That's our quarter inch. That is how you know to stagger to the next line. You'll simply draw the line, 
move over that quarter inch, draw the line, and draw the line. Easy peasy, right? Draw them ahead of time so you know exactly where you're going to be sewing. On this Christmas tree here, and by the way, this is just our idea. This was just how we wanted to decorate the tree. Maybe you want to do something with hand embroidery. There's a beautiful guide here that has all kinds of embroidery stitches, or maybe you want to do something on the sewing machine with a completely different stitch, up to you. Here on this tree, we just marked our line diagonally and moved over and came back and moved the other direction. You get the idea. So that was just something extra that we thought to do. With the other things, like just outlining the candy cane, we used the appropriate colors. We used the 12 weight to just accentuate our center and of course around our scallop. Moving on to the embroidery. I'm gonna just give a little pause so we can get a little bit closer. I'm gonna give you two options of how to do this stitch. I'm gonna show you the formal way the stitch is created and I'm gonna show you an even easier technique if you've ever struggled with doing embroidery. What's the goal? The goal is to create your garland no matter how you approach it. So I'll show you two techniques and you can choose your favorite. So to do this stitch, as I said, there are really two techniques. I'm gonna show you the formal way to do this and then I'm gonna show you a way that is going to give you the same look and might be simpler for you to accomplish. But try them both, right? You're not gonna learn new stitches unless you give it a try, and I always love to, to give that a try. Thread magic, if you have any trouble with knots kind of occurring, you can always just grab this. This is the embroidery floss included in your kit. You can just simply run that through. It's kind of a thread tamer. I find it coming into play more when we're using pearl cotton five or eight. Not as many problems with DMC floss. But if you do have trouble or have had trouble, maybe you want thread magic. Okay, since we already have a beautiful garland there, I'm just gonna draw this here. And we're just gonna pretend that this is what we are going for. Now, I'm just gonna put these lines in here just because that's what we're going for. They won't necessarily have to be there if you're going to do the stitch the first way I'm going to teach you, but the second way you would need to draw them in like that. So this, I'm glad we're actually gonna cover both techniques. I have three strands of green embroidery floss knotted in the end. We're gonna start at the top and work our way down. So we'll come up at the end of our line, of course. And we'll come down right about at the base of that, where that kind of V comes in. Now we come up to the left. I'm gonna trap that thread with my thumb and I'm gonna come over here like this. And I bet you know what I'm gonna do. Because if I come right back here, up here, I capture the V. Now I come there where the two V's come in once again and I complete that next post. Here to the left, trap, go to the right, come up where you had gone down That's all there is to this stitch. It's actually very fast. Down, left, right, come up at the base, and done. What's this other method? You can probably see that if you just backstitch this all the way down, you could backstitch this and then just come back from the sides and add in your Vs, right? Either way will really give you the same look. I think the first stitch is more fun. I think it's also faster. And I'm also not backtracking. Because once I put this back stitch in, 
I need to go back and bring the sides in. Down. Then I'd come in from the side. Come down. From the side. I need to let that start to get a little spinny there. You could kind of thread your, from the back, trying to travel up to the next location. Now, I'd come up here. So you see how really, once I get these last couple stitches in, you almost can't tell which way, how I did it, one way or the other, because it really looks the same. Pick your favorite way. Again, I really think the first way is faster. I'm not having to go back. But pick your favorite technique. Pick your favorite way to get that stitch done. Looks the same. Nobody would know. Tie off as you normally would. Back underneath once and again twice. We'll give a little bit of a cut there. And you've seen us do beads before where we grab for those straw needles. And we have this time a beautiful selection of both red and gold. And just like we've done, we, I used the red, kind of this beautiful color inside the thread set. And we also use the gold. If you're gonna be picking up the thread set, I would do that. If you're gonna be just picking up the pattern and sewing from home, you might wanna use you know, that deep gold or metallic from home. Just like you've seen us do a strand of this knotted, you start a bead, and I would of course do all of my red, and we fish that underneath. I'll see if I can show that to you. Where of course the greenery is stitched first, and then the beading is done second. And you can see us just kind of fishing that through. You can see that a little bit. Where we just get all the red done, tie off, and come back and do the gold and tie off, and all the way around we go. So you can see that a simple little stitch of greenery adds a touch of elegance to an already beautiful and elegant project. This one, be sure to pick up these kits. I keep saying this every month. That's because I see this inventory just dwindling away as I'm trying to capture all remaining fabric to be able to continue to give you these original fabrics that we're showing here as we continue our series. As I said, get your kits, your thread sets, get the rest of the series, let a friend know as well. And I'm excited to see you next month as we continue our Simply Sweet Tabletopper series.